Welcome, folks, to my combat channel news. I'm the Yakman, Ron Yakovetti. Fabiano Iha, the king of the armor. Still. Still. That's never going to change, is it? I don't think so. No. Not, not after this age. He'll be 90 years old in a home going, ah, <laughs> king of the armor. <laughs> and he'll still be pulling them off. There we go. So welcome to the show. Tonight's show, probably appealing to you, very international tonight. We're going to talk very about good. UFC and MMA overall overseas. The expansion of the sport going global. We're going to talk about the SFL in India, a big show that's going off there. They're doing some big stuff, trying to grow the fighting industry in that area. We're going to have a special treat for you on an international front as well. And then some sponsorship stuff and a little bit they more. Start to show up on the, on the sport. About I, like, the I love that. I love that. We got a very good show, my friends. Don't go anywhere. He's been working on that for you. So first we start out with the SFL, India's only pro-sanctioned mixed martial arts promotion. And uh, we're gonna show you a uh, couple images that we'll pull up now. You see that that's the logo. So I mean, everything from the look and the feel of the show yeah. and the very way they classic. do the arena, very classic. Um, they're pulling some names over there that they're mm -hmm. getting from the mixed martial arts community, as many shows do. Names that have been known for me, the Strike Force, UFC, etc. We'll see that they had, um, we're gonna pull up a video in a second now. Uh, guys, if you're at home and you respect to see like a two skinny guys into a fight that's the image like you probably come up into your mind when you think about indian guys fighting you're fine. completely wrong yeah okay because take a look at this video and look yeah. at the size of these guys that's very funny <laughs> yes that's true you're gonna see a clip right now is james the colossus thompson a lead C veteran mm -hmm. uh cage rage veteran from the uk he's taking on here bobby lashley fought in strike force if lashley looks familiar Yep. You probably are a WWE fan. He's fought in that organization oh, as nice well. Nice that gauge is. These guys could have had a pose down to decide who won it if it came to a draw. You see right there, Lashley working from side on Thompson. Thompson, nice by the way. Got hair. Yeah, his haircut. haircut. Very haircut. nice. He also, um, widely known at one point, he fought Kimbo Slice in Elite XC mm -hmm. and his ear was pretty much hanging off. Hanging off, yeah, that, that was a classic. That was a classic moment in the sport. So the SFL doing some big things. We'll see another image here coming up mm -hmm. in a second. The area is new, like my combat channel also in India. In of India. Course. We are in India like uh, You see the poster here for that event we just saw. How mm -hmm. primed do you think the international community is for this sport? They're very accepted, like we've been closing deals, international deals, and uh, when we talk about that my combat channel is in India, it's not a two hours block like you guys uh, actually see in, in LA. We're talking about 24-7 full channel. That's what we're talking about in India, in Australia, in Mexico, and in a couple other places that I, I got punched too many times in the head, I can't remember them. <laughs> Your geography was good though. Well. As long as you know which one of those places you're in right now. This is places that I like to go, so <laughs> Australia, America. <laughs> so it's easy to keep it. So, I mean, the country is going to start probably doing what a lot of other countries do. Mm -hmm. They initially start out with some gyms, they'll get some fights, and maybe a promotion like yep. this pops up. Yep. But then they need to start pulling the other stuff that they don't have, that, that America has, and other countries may have, which is mm -hmm. the strength and conditioning coach, the diet and nutrition coach, and start bringing those people in to build the camps stronger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, if you're not very uh, familiar with the whole thing was going on in India, they got a reality show in India that is so cool. It's mixed up between uh, exercising and, uh, right. and uh, what is that? Like uh, gaming is the whole thing. Yeah. It's not only like fighting, fighting, fighting. It's, and there's a uh, like woman involved. It's the, it's the whole thing. We got video on that one too. So let's yeah, we're take gonna a take a look. look. This is called the SFL, which is the Super Fight League in mm -hmm. India. This is their Challenger Series show. Somewhat like, like an Ultimate Fighter kind of a show or like contenders that they did for boxing where they profile some athletes that come in, mm -hmm. they're trying to make themselves a career, and they show them training, and some of the unorthodox training methods, you're talking about some outdoors activities, yeah, they're in the gyms. See, right, this is the opening, a nice logo for the Challenger yeah, Series, so they're nice spending logo, some money yeah. on that too. You see the guys coming in the gym, very uh, reminiscent of that kind of a show when they chronicle mm -hmm. somebody trying to embark on a career. You've seen that here, this is one of the, one of the gentlemen who runs the SFL, you see some of the athletes, male and female. Male and female, of course. They like that. They are already open mind in there. And I was going to ask you about that. How do you feel? I mean, already seeing women on a show like this, they're they're out of the gate where America wasn't even. I, and take take that, that that way. Like in India, how hard it is to be a female fighter? 
is that is something that is not as easy as in America or in Brazil. In Brazil, you some depend on neighborhood that you grow yeah. up. You become a fighter since you you born. You see some right here. This is a one of the one of the contenders and his mother. He's shown clips of him training. I mean, they're very much playing to the human interest side of the fighter trying to embark on the career. Is he one of the presidents of the organization right there? Yeah, that is so cool. I like that, and I love that we part of that whole uh, culture right now. We, you know, like they, we are available in India, and like everybody else too. So, by the way, real fast too, mm -hmm. did you always get to ask me this question when it's, did you ever hear who was going to fight someone? So, who, who was up for, you know, who was up for commentating with the SFL? Maybe you. I was up for a comment. It didn't happen. Uh, by the time I got through to the right people, I guess they had already filled the position. You got a better job now, man. But I am job. so much happier sitting next yeah. to King of the Armbar than, you got a better job than now. sitting over there doing that. Nonetheless, and I agree. Um, we're going to take a look now at, at, um, at a clip from the UFC Ultimate Fighter show that we know in America. And its rendition in this video is what it looks like when they do it in Brazil. It's mm -hmm. part of the opening. And uh, the reason we we're looking at this is because the Ultimate Fighter is going to be airing in India as our regular fight events. Mm -hmm. So just to get an idea what the international show and feel is, they're going to be doing the same thing and tailoring it The, the same to thing India. they just did in Brazil. There we go. You that was right the Brazilian here. one, the Vitor Belfort team on, on the green. Against and, Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva on the blue. And uh, the sad was that Vanderlei got hurt and the coach could not uh, make that final uh, fight happen. That, as you guys, as you folks know, uh, normally the coach they fight against each other in the end. Right. So, how how big of a thing is this in Brazil? Do you know, and, and how big do you think it's going to be in India? Well, in Brazil is huge, and I can't imagine India because India is very popular right now, and we got our guy there. No? Yes, we do. When we come back from break, we actually have our international correspondent, I can't even say it, I'm so nervous. International correspondent Ian Harris is going to be in India. Don't go anywhere. We're sending people places, getting you the news from I'm the front the one lines. Play that doesn't speak English very well. Yeah, but I'm stumbling all over the place tonight. It happens. Welcome back, folks, to My Combat Channel News. We're very excited about what we're going to be sharing in this segment. We told you before the commercial, but first, yep. just so you know how you can get in touch with us and maybe suggest things, tell us what you like, what you don't like. We've got a couple different ways to get in touch with us. You can walk, more than walk, <laughs> here. You could walk here. In Beverly Hills on Cannon Drive, or you can also uh, send us an email going to www.mycombatchannel.com and emails us from our, from there, sorry. And? And Twitter. You can come to our twandle. It's like twindle. a CB handle and a Twitter twandle. Charles Allen, comedian, said that. Um, you can twandle us, twiddle us, tweedle, whatever, and, uh, and we'll tweet you back and follow you too. And then you can see what we're doing and what we've done and watch some of our shows on YouTube as well as mm -hmm. on mycombatchannel.com. And on Facebook as well. Anyway, we got better things to do than just blah, blah, blah. Let's do it. Then. Yes, we are going to continue with the theme we started the show with when we talked about the SFL, the SFL Challenger Series, and the UFC all having a foothold, um, or UFC trying to have a foothold at least, in India. My combat channel is... In India. Also in India. But we are going to now go live to our international correspondent, Ian Harris, who is standing by from India. Ian, what do you got for us? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it's great here, by the way. First off, I just want to say um, thanks for the assignment. This is great. But um, just to clarify, when I said that I was looking to go Indian, I was kind of referring to uh, living out my Frida Pinto fantasy, you know, the, the hot chick from Slumdog Millionaire. But hey, this is cool too, you know? All right, well, hopefully you're, you know, you'll, you'll find your way over there and have a good time. It's, uh, you may be jet lagged, I'm sure, from traveling. Is, uh, is it a big difference? What, what time is it there now? Uh, here it is. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's bad. But I, I figured I was gonna have to work a little harder to get that in right away. But no. Uh, anyway. So tell us, the MMA start to blow up in India. In India, isn't? Yeah, you know. First off, I, far be it from me to correct the boss man there, uh, uh, Fab. But um, please, if you can, let's maybe we should just steer clear of 
using the phrase blowing up. I mean, you know, the Indians, they're, they're peaceful people, but we are just over the border from Pakistan and I am not sure about them. <laughs> I was just trying to say is that they're getting very popular over there, don't they? Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely uh, the, the Super Fight League, which you guys I, I heard talked about earlier, um, is just they are looking to make their promotion just a big deal in this part of the world. They're bringing in all the best fighters, all the best of the UFC's expelled, assembling, uh, assembling like a, a who's who used to be who in the UFC. It's a roster of athletes, you know. Uh, that sounds a little bit critical. Uh, of course, you know, all the smaller f promotions and shows, they, you know, they use UFC fighters, they play that whole angle up, former UFC guy, to promote their talent and their shows. And I think it's, it's critical for the fighters to have somewhere to fight and make a living outside of the UFC itself. No, absolutely. And, but, and once again, totally agree. But here's the problem, okay? Americans, Brits, just people, great fighters from all over the world are being booked to fight on cards in India, taking away new jobs in a new job market that Indian athletes would happily fill. Huh, and what's wrong with that? <laughs> what, what's wrong? Seriously, guys, come on, think about this, okay? When the people of India can't find work in MMA, they'll be forced to open up new call centers and lure American companies into creating those jobs here. <laughs> Ian, uh, that already happens. Uh, I'm not really sure what you're trying to prevent. All right, dude, you gotta think it through, okay? If jobs and call centers come here, more unemployed Americans will be walking around our cities, making it damn near impossible to catch a cab anywhere. So with so many people needing rides and not enough giving them, then you've got people fighting for a cab and not getting paid for that either. So then what happens? Then the taxi industry in America sees a boom, right? And more folks from India get employed in America. And th there's really, there's no way we can win. So Ian, tell me something. Is this sport being accepted in the culture over there? Yeah, I mean, it, it appears that way, um, but I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure that MMA won't be modified here sooner or later. Uh, I'm probably gonna regret this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask anyway. Ask him, yeah. ask him. Could you explain that, the whole modifying? Thing. Yeah, wussified. <laughs> Look it up on Wikipedia later, because I still have to add it when I get done here. But uh, anyway, look, this culture doesn't get fighting, okay? They're behind the times. It's like pre-West Side Story here, right? In Indian cinema, in a martial arts fight scene, it doesn't matter how heavily outnumbered you are, your enemies will patiently wait and attack you one by one, dancing around in a threatening manner until you've knocked out all their predecessors, okay? That's the very definition of wussified. By tonight, of course, you'll see that later when I, when I add it. I, I promise, I promise I'll do that. So what happens there when the UFC start airing pay-per-views in the Ultimate Fighter season? What happens? What happens? You ask. You wonder what happens? This. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Ian Harris, live from India. Ian, thanks very much. Uh, we'll be bringing him back. Um, anyway, you so, see that picture of Dana? You see yeah. what you got to do to sell some tickets? He'll do it. He's the boss man. Incidentally, mm -hmm. we have a team of reporters. You're going to be seeing more stuff like that. We're going to be covering mm -hmm. not just my combat channel being available in other parts of the world, but our reporters going out there. They're going covering. to Brazil. They're going to Brazil for UFC Brazil as well. Yep, for you people covering the sport of mixed martial arts. We're spending, spending some money, sending some people everywhere in the world. That's what yeah. we're doing. We're spending all our money on that, not on us. Yeah, exactly. But we, you know, we don't need that. I look good anyway. <laughs> I don't spend no money on the haircut. That's true. You get that little sample thing at the hotel, it lasts you like a week. That's all I need to do. All right. It's like go. Costco for you. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. We will be back next. More of my combat channel news. The pressure. Here. Yeah. Welcome back to my combat channel news. Now we're going to talk about the business of mixed martial arts. Business and martial arts. Because as much as they say it's the fastest growing sport in the world, it's the fastest sport in the world. <laughs> if we could do that all the time. If we can do that all the time. <laughs> so the sport is growing, right? People think mixed martial arts spreading like wildfire, fastest growing sport in the world. That is what it's called. That's what it is. However, statistics Whatever. show, according to MMAPayout.com, that uh, households showing, for example, like the Ultimate Fighter, mm -hmm. 
and UFC shows down from 2012 into 2013. Numbers showing the viewership down, availability of household down. You see right here some key markets like New York, Los Angeles. Not a big drop in some, but you do see significant numbers going down on some of those statistics. Mm -hmm. And it may not seem like it's a big deal when it's going from 7 million, 387, 810,000 to 384,000, whatever, but it's, it's a drop nonetheless. And for a growth sport and a growth industry, seeing any kind of drop in the numbers, somewhat of a red flag from the business side. But that number may be because they changed from one network to another network? That is a very interesting point. Um, they did, of course, as folks know, went from Spike, they where spiked. they had a home, yeah. to a multi platform Fox deal mm -hmm. with FX, Fuel, and Fox Regional and National. Mm -hmm. Do you think the first Fox show hurt the crossover to the Fox platform when they had one heavyweight fight, it went well, one minute of action, and then the rest of it was like watching Oprah, it was like 40 something, 50 minutes of bio. Yeah, that was not, that didn't go very well. Well, a first, live show didn't go very well either. That's an understatement. <laughs> our, well, our first live show was kind of yeah, kind of horrendous. Yeah. Yet we're so, still here. We're still here. And we're getting better. Some people <laughs> think. That's what we tell ourselves. My mom thinks. So nonetheless, um, uh, a very important thing to keep an eye on from the business side of the sport, uh, MMAPayout.com, uh, where you get a lot of the business statistics of the sport. Mm -hmm. And the business side of the sport, not just based on viewership, right? Fighters make their money being paid to fight, but they have other revenue streams, and that's what we're going to talk about next, and that is? Sponsorships. I love that. Anyway, my time I used to love the most is the sponsorship and also the free stuff that you get. Uh, you, know, you get swag. You yeah, you guys used to, to you know, get things for free. Uh, you know, you want to pimp your car, you get that for free. You know, you want to close, you get that for free. You got a nice watch, you get that for free. And you keep going. But anyway, now we talk about Nike. You step in and sponsor two main UFC two? names. Yeah. Two, two of the best in the sport, arguably, right now. John Bones Jones. Anderson, and the Anderson Spider Silva, Silva yes. have sponsorship deals with Nike. Back mm -hmm. in the day, early UFC time, early MMA, no holds barred, whatever that, an unheard of concept to have a mainstream sports company. You can see why that Burger, Burger King, in. Nike, and uh, some folks don't know, but uh, he, he also is sponsored by one bigger soccer team in Brazil. Is that why he does that whole front kick thing to the chin? Just he got paid. Yeah, I think contract. He, he got paid extra. <laughs> extra to do that. <laughs> you know, like a bonus. A bo <laughs> All right. A, a soccer, a soccer ball, a soccer kick. What else? Into the into the ball. A soccer kick to the ball. There you go. Or as we like to call it, the twig and berries. Um, so there was also talk from the UFC side that when John Bones Jones got his deal to be sponsored by Nike, that Nike was taking away. Their sponsorship for Manny Pacquiao, professional fighter in boxing, and then allotting that money to the John Bones Jones deal. Stop it, stop it, please stop it. Dana, 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 don't push it that much. You're gonna tell me that Nike gonna let go Pacquiao from John Jones. Stop it. <laughs> well, the, the statement had the same reaction that you had with a lot of folks, including Nike. They stepped in and went, hey, hey, no. Pacquiao's got a deal. As a matter of fact, Pacquiao's management said newer deals are in the works to give him continuous sponsorship. Uh, in lieu of what is happening on the MMA side with Anderson and mm -hmm. John Jones. You got a nice sponsorship to sponsor us on the top 10 countdown welterweight division. You're not and saying that's that is, next, are you? It is right now. Top 10 welterweights, because he said so. And that was the top 10 middleweight division. Number 10, Alan Belcher. Number 9, Yushin Okami. Number 8, Luke Rockhold. Number seven, Mark Munoz. Number six, Tim Boach.
Number five, Michael the Count Bisping. Number four, Vitor Belfort. Number three, Chris Weedman. Number two, Chael Sonnen. And number one, we have the spider himself, Anderson Silva. I'm Erin Gales, and that was the top 10 middleweight division. Erin Gales doing what she does for us, and we appreciate it. Great job. Any sponsorship, interest in sponsor her? Yeah, we'll send her to pick up the check from you. Does that help? I think it does. Depends. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Thanks for watching My Combat Channel News, where every night we're here. We hope you are too. I see you back tomorrow and the next day. And the, and the next day. And the next day.